Hey there, so today I want to show you how to use gradient maps in order to make painting things like clouds a lot easier for you. And so what a gradient map is essentially going to let you do is focus on sculpting your clouds with your values and shapes, and it gives you the color sort of automatically. And what this lets you do is avoid introducing any values or colors into your clouds that shouldn't be there, and it keeps everything very consistent looking, as well as just speeds up the process dramatically. And so you can see what I did here. This I maybe spent hour, hour and 15 minutes sort of playing around with it and just sort of having some fun and experimenting with shapes and stuff like that. I don't consider this to be any great shakes, but you'll see down here I have uh, the reference image that I use. And this is where I actually pulled um, my gradient colors from to map into what I was painting up here. So when possible, you should definitely use photo reference. And so with the gradient map, in order to create this, what you need to do is come down to here into uh, your adjustment layers and just click the gradient map button and it'll give you a new gradient map. I already have one created here for us, so I'm just going to double click that and the gradient map palette will pop up over here. And if you click this, you'll recognize this if you use the gradient tool. And essentially what you're doing is mapping the values in the clouds here to the different colors here. What I mean by that is everything on this side of the gradation is black and everything on this side of the gradation is white. So white gets mapped to this yellow color and black gets mapped to this bluish color. And you'll see that it's not as dark as black. So you can map these to anything you want. You can invert things. You can slide these around. I'm not going to go in depth with this because it should already be familiar to you. But if it's not, it's very easy to get the hang of. You can just experiment with it. So I'm just going to keep this as it is. All right, I'm going to butt into my own tutorial for a second here because I don't think I made this clear enough. Um, but when you map these colors to your gradient map, uh, the lightest colors in your clouds get mapped to the right side, which is the white side, and the darkest areas in your clouds get mapped to the left side, which is the black side, and then the gradation in between is that you pick up various colors and grades in between those two and map those as well, just to make that a little bit more clear. All right, continuing on. And what I'm essentially going to do is uh, do some setup real quick for you and it's, it's nothing too complicated it's fairly straightforward so I'll turn off what we had there and so we already have our gradient cloud map and so the next thing I want to do is create a layer for to clip this to and so I create this layer and then when I click the gradient map if I uh, hold alt or option I believe between the two layers I get this little icon right here and I can just clip that and what that does is it constrains the gradient map to whatever's in this layer another way to do this is just to click that and go to create clipping map. And so I'll turn this on, you'll see nothing happens because there's nothing in this layer. What I'm going to do, and this is going to help us as we're painting, is just create a marquee right here. And I'm going to use the gradient tool. And I'm just going to create a black to white gradient inside this uh, layer right here. So like that. And you'll see we have this nice gradient here. And I'll just move this down a little bit. And what this does is gives us a nice visual representation of the colors that will be on our image and the value range. And you'll see if I turn off the gradient map now, we just have that nice black to white gradient. And the other setup thing that we're going to do is come into here to this eyedropper tool, make sure it's set to current and below. Um, this just makes sure that we're selecting our uh, black and white and gray value ranges whenever possible. Because if you end up selecting something else in the image, you may not get the, uh, the color you want to paint with. It's not a huge deal, but it certainly helps. And so just make sure that's selected. And so essentially, after we have all this setup done, is I can just choose a cloud brush that I'm happy with, something that works well for like silhouetting. And you want to you wanna approach this um, um, with your large shapes first. So you go large, medium, small. And that's generally how you should work with any sort of image making, is work with your large shapes first, then to your medium, then to your small shapes. And we're also going to work from back to front, because down here you'll see we have these smaller overlapping shapes in the front, and the big ones in back are important. So you work from back to front and from uh, large to small is usually going to be the way you're going to want to do it. And so I'll come back up here, and I'm just going to choose a darker color for now, which helps us do the silhouetting. And I'm just going to use a brush that I'm happy with in terms of creating nice silhouettes. And so you can take as much or as little time as you want here, whatever you're happy with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the transparent pixels on this. And so what you do is you either click this checkerboard icon here, or you can hit the forward slash button on your keyboard. So I'm just going to do that. And what that does is keeps our painting constrained to this layer. And so what I'm going to do now is create, select sort of a, a mid-range and just sort of lightly brush into this layer, keeping our light directionality in mind down here. 
And in terms of doing stuff like these clouds, it's important to utilize as many tools available to you as you can that are going to help you. And so when I say that, what I mean is using cloud brushes is great, but don't be afraid to use dodge and burn, and especially the smudge tool are going to be very helpful. So in areas like this where maybe I'm feeling that there's too much detail, I can switch to my smudge tool and blend that out. You know, and then I can go back in here later and make it look a little bit nicer. And so switching back and forth between all these tools is a, a smart way to do it. So it may take a little while to get something that you feel is working and looking really nice, but the important thing is, is that you're able to experiment really easily doing these sorts of things and, and getting the, um, the shapes and uh, colors and value that you want. You know, so like right here, you know, things are looking pretty generic. There's not a ton of form to it yet. So what I can do is just come into uh, the burn tool and you'll see how there's uh, edges down here. Um, so these dark edges around things because the light is coming from a uh, sort of uh, front forward here. And so that's actually going to be important to uh, selling the lighting in some work like this is making sure that you have some of those edges that might feel a little bit unnatural to paint, but that you see in photos quite frequently in terms of making things like this pop out. So you can do that and then we'll just switch over to, uh, to Dodge and we'll do the same thing. We'll just sort of glaze over the tops of everything here and just keeping that light directionality in mind with the clouds below and you'll see that um, they're gaining a lot more form now you know and then we'll just hit alt and we can we can uh, burn the bottoms here a little bit and you'll see just even by using dodge and burn after you get these general shapes in here you can get something really nice and also you don't have to use cloud brushes for everything just a big soft brush will frequently let you uh, get the right lighting on things that you need Right, and so um, with stuff like this, you know, you can uh, you can uh, turn off the lock transparent pixels thing if you have areas like this that are a little bit too see through, and you can just you know blend that out. In addition to that, you can change your smudge brush to maybe uh, a cloud brush or something like that, and you can uh, knock around these edges a little bit, make them feel perhaps a little bit more natural or a little bit more wispy, or you can go in there and make them a little harder if you want. You know, so this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. It's like thinking like a sculptor. You know, sculpt the shapes into whatever you need. Because doing this, you're never going to get weird colors or weird smudges. Or like sometimes when you use the uh, the smudge tool on stuff like this, you'll get those weird rainbow effects if you're doing something that's not a completely flat layer. And so you avoid that entirely by using um, the gradient map because it'll see those rainbowy colors and it'll just ignore them and map them. And so if I turn this off. I think because we're working completely in black and white, we're not really getting that. But if you had any amount of color in there, it would start to do that if you were painting this normally. And so this helps us just completely get rid of that sort of thing. And so just keep messing around with this, you know, around the edges and stuff. And, you know, you can warp it, paint it, smudge it, do whatever you want. Just start getting yourself a little bit more of a natural look on things, you know. Do something more interesting with the bottom here. Maybe switch to an actual, like, palette knife smudge things out you know so this isn't just good for doing uh, realistic clouds either you could do very painterly stuff with this and have it look really nice you know and then even just come in here with the eraser if you need to sort of smudge things out and so now that we have this uh, set up in the back here I'm going to uh, select the cloud layer and just sort of size it up a little bit right and so what I'm gonna do now is you can create another layer above this and the gradient map will uh, stay clipped to both of them but if you want to go outside the bounds of what you already have there then you're just gonna want to create a new layer above everything and then if you hold alt and drag that gradient map above there it'll create a new one and then you can just clip that one as well and so now what we're gonna do is just on this new layers do the same thing that we have been doing and that's just take like a mid-tone layer and just create a new silhouette essentially and this is where, you know, you'll start to layer these different cloud layers together and really start to get some depth in your image. So you can lay out your entire background's clouds in a matter of minutes doing a technique like this and then sort of just spend some time refining it and getting it to look a little bit nicer as you go. But it's really great for block-ins because you don't have to worry about those colors. If you choose your colors at the beginning, and don't get me wrong, sometimes setting up the gradients can take a little bit especially because you're going to want to experiment with painting a little bit and see if the gradient's working for you and adjust it accordingly. But um, 
it saves you a lot of time in the long term. So we'll just lock the transparent pixels on this guy again, and we'll do the same thing we've been doing. It's just sort of start brushing some form into here. And you'll see as we start to layer these clouds in front of one another, things really start to come together a lot better than if you just have that sort of flat band of clouds that we originally had. And so that's the sort of thing you want to do is just design your image in such a way. And obviously you're, it's, it's, it's likely that your uh, clouds are not going to be the uh, focus of your image. So it's easy to spend way more time than you need to on stuff like this. But uh, having a good background is essential for uh, a lot of images you know, having interesting clouds. Sometimes your focus has nothing to do with clouds, but having an interesting sky in your image is gonna inform the mood of the rest of your image. And that's that's important to keep in mind. You know, and so we'll just keep painting in here a little bit. Maybe we want some hotter spots. You'll see this is actually hotter than anything we have in that background, which uh, can actually benefit us to have us pop that out a little bit, but maybe it's a little bit too much, I don't know. So we'll keep doing this. And like I said before, you have those the sort of dark edges around the edges of these things. And so I'll just come back in here to burn and sort of burn that down a little bit. And you'll see as soon as I do that, it starts to look a little bit more natural and a little bit more photographic. It's one of those things where um, sometimes less is more. So you kind of want to be a little bit subtle with it, but it all depends on your image. But like I said, make sure you have um, some reference that you're working with because that's always going to be really beneficial with uh, stuff like this is making sure you have reference to go by. Because if you start making things up a little bit too much, then uh, you get into that territory where someone criticizes it or critiques it and then you have to sit there and claim that it's your style. And that's, that's not a position you want to be in. And so I'll leave this here for now and um, I'll just bring back what I did before so you can see sort of, you know, spending a little bit of time on it and just really focusing on those value ranges and the composition and things of that nature, you know. And so like with this, you can, too, you can come in here and um, do like a levels adjustment if you needed to. So if you really wanted to like darken up that background and make the, the foreground pop a little bit more, you could do that. Or if you wanted to bring that up in here and darken our foreground a little bit, those foreground clouds, you know, you could do that as well. You can turn off the... Uh, the clipping mask and sort of blend out the bottom here make that sit in there a little bit nicer and just sort of make these a little bit blurrier and wispier you know and come in here and paint a little bit you know so you can see you can see how easy this is in terms of just sort of messing around with your clouds and it gives you a, a lot of flexibility and you don't ever really have to commit to anything you could switch it up change things do whatever you want and what's really great is you can bring in another image and so I'm just going to select these clouds in here, right? Just uh, cut the bottom off. Copy. I'm just going to turn off our current cloud layers. I'm just going to paste this in here and size it up. And so you could use the gradient map technique on existing clouds. So if I like these cloud shapes and what this looks like, but I want this palette and these colors here, I'll just take that gradient map clip it to this and you'll see it's not quite working yet because we don't have the right value range in there. But then I'll just adjust that value range and all of a sudden we're using a different image and mapping these colors to it. And you can even just use this as a basis and then start painting on top of it. So if I just drag that below our current layers, I could use this as sort of a backdrop and use that as sort of a reference for say the level of detail that I want to get in my painted clouds and sort of just paint to that and match to that and so that gives me a nice place to jump off of and I go oh, okay I see how we have this lighting here and then I can just come in here on my own painted layer and sort of start to try to mimic how that lighting is working back in there with those cloud shapes just by dropping that image in here of any clouds really you know so you want to make sure because uh, clouds like this are like midday clouds and so you don't want to make them too sunsetty because then it may feel unnatural but I think you get the idea. Um, the only other thing I'm going to show you, and I, I left it till the end because it can be kind of finicky, is that I'm just going to turn off all these layers here. You can actually create a group and clip this cloud gradient to it, the gradient map to the group. And so I'm just going to hide everything that we've already done. And so inside the group, we'll just create a whole bunch of layers really quick, right? And then I'm just going to. Uh, 
brush in some cloud layers. And so I can have that layer right there. And then on the one above it, I'll have a different cloud layer. And you'll see that the gradient map is hitting all the different layers in here. So you don't have to have a new gradient map for every single layer. The only thing that gets a little finicky, and this has been a bug in Photoshop for a while, is that if you're trying to select the certain, see, you can see this is already a problem. Um, we're trying to select this color here and we're getting it. But if we try to select this color, which is on the layer we're currently on, we're getting the layer under it, which is not how Photoshop should operate. And so in order to get around this and be being, being able to um, work in a group and not being able to actually color select, it's not a huge issue because we're just working with values, right? If we wanted to select a specific color, it might be a bigger problem. But because we're working with values, then what I'm recommending you do, like I did in the beginning, is just set up that gradient at the very bottom of the stack. And that way, if you want to select a specific color range, and you know this is roughly here, and we want to select that, we can go down here and select where we think that color range is instead. And so maybe we're a little bit too dark here, but you know, see, selecting this gives us two. In any case, that's, that's my recommendation if you want to work within a group. I typically work inside the group and just use this as a bit of a workaround. That way I don't have, you know, 50 different layers, each with its own gradient map. You can do this for all sorts of things, not just clouds, any sorts of effects, or even images that are sort of stylized and have a very specific color grade to them. You can use a gradient map for, and maybe I'll get into that in the future. Hopefully this was useful to you, and I hope you have fun, and um, if you do anything interesting with it, definitely uh, show me. I'd be interested in seeing it. Thanks. Take care.